Hello and welcome to Tallulah Lagash. Today I'm going to talk to you about dream residue and day residue and the importance of these two concepts when we analyse our dreams. So first off I'm going to talk to you about dream residue because I can do this one quite quickly and then I'd like to concentrate for the remainder of the video on day residue which is something which I think is incredibly important for people interested in their dreams or self-discovery through dreaming to actually pay more attention to and it's often quite an overlooked aspect of dreaming. So dream residue to start off is what is sometimes referred to as a dream hangover. It happens when you wake up in the morning and you can't remember your dream but some fragments of the emotional response that you have probably had to the forgotten dream or some pattern of thought that relates to this forgotten dream is still lingering in your mind and it's really really hard to shake these feelings off and they can affect you for the remainder of the day. It's really hard to shake them off because you can't rationalise them and relate them to an actual event in your waking life. They relate to the forgotten aspects of the dream. Now some people may have um, positive feelings when they wake up with dream residue but actually for me most of the dream residue that I experience is quite negative. So I wake up and I can't remember my dream but I have this really strong sense of um, depression or anxiety or failure or loss and it can really really affect at least the first few hours of my day um, particularly as my brain is going through um, potentially things that have been happening in my waking life and then hitting a blank and then trying to um, remember and recall my dream and also not getting anywhere and this is why people refer to it as the hangover the dream hangover because it's um, a mental version of that really awful feeling that you've had after you've indulged in alcohol and you just wake up and you think there's something still in my system and it's making me feel rubbish and I just can't get rid of it. It's the emotional version of that related to dreaming. Now some spiritual people refer to it as astral repercussion because they link it to the idea that your astral body has been travelling around the dream world or the different astral planes and then when you wake up in the morning there's some kind of leftover um, loss of energy um, as a result of what your dream body has been doing during sleep. Now I'm not spiritual so I don't really pay any attention to the kind of esoteric writings on dreams other than just to familiarise myself with the concepts and what's um, being said in these particular discourses but certainly um, since I've been researching dream residue and day residue I found an enormous wealth of academic literature on them so instead of having to look at the spiritual explanations I've been looking at academic journals and the current um, work that's been going on in terms of neuroscience and psychology which have tried to address these aspects of dreaming and find a scientific and empirical basis for them and I'll be mentioning some of these studies as I go through this video. So dream residue is the fragments of the dream which are left over and affect your waking day but day residue is the complete opposite. Now day residue is a term which was coined by Sigmund Freud in his interpretation of dreams um, which was published in 1900. Day residue relates to the day or the dream day as it's known which directly precedes the dream. Now sometimes um, my day residue relates to events in my waking life which have occurred a few days before the dream takes place and I'm going to make a distinction between day residue from the past 24 hours and day residue from longer ago in a moment but we'll just use the term day residue to refer to just typically things in your waking life which have happened just before you go to sleep and have the dream. Now the things that relate um, to the concept of day residue tend to be very commonplace or boring events in the waking life which don't seem to have any kind of significance while we're awake. So it could be something um, 
such as eating strawberries or seeing a rainbow or watching a particular film on TV something just very ordinary that we wouldn't really pay much attention to then we go to sleep and this commonplace everyday event from our waking life then happens in our dream but it may be changed it may be altered it might not be a direct replay of the event in our memory but it might be condensed or symbolized or saturated because it's undergone what freud called dream work which is the censoring and concealing of um, the symbolism um, the dream content so that it's not easy for us to decode because he believed that dreams are always uh, made up of what's called manifest content so what happens directly as we experience it in the dream what happens on the surface of the dream and then the latent content which is the meaning which has to be uncovered um, under the psychoanalytical method so when we have the day residue cropping up in our dream it may not be um, as it happened in our waking reality it may be changed so instead of eating the strawberries in the dream perhaps the strawberries are um, smeared all over the room that you walk into and you just walk into a mess of strawberries and you think to yourself when you wake up and remember the dream well I dreamed of strawberries and it wasn't exactly the same as my memory of eating the strawberries but it was directly influenced by the fact that I did have some strawberries the day before I went to sleep and the meaning of the um, day residue when it appears in the dream is thought by Freud to be um, part of this wish fulfillment theory of dreaming so he believed that every single dream is a form of wish fulfillment so it's the fulfillment of our subconscious desires and wishes which we can't act on in our waking lives and therefore are acted out in our dreams but in this coded symbolized form now day residue relates to this idea of wish fulfillment because freud believed that when we experience events in our waking life they stimulate or arouse these subconscious wishes and desires in us which have existed since childhood and then they are presented in the dream in this coded way because there's be, there's connections and associations between the day residue event and the hidden wish so perhaps the strawberries that I ate in my waking life to give you this hypothetical scenario because they're red and they've got juice coming out and the juice relates in my mind the connection subconsciously is with blood when I then later had a dream and the strawberries appear in the dream and they're smeared all over the kitchen um, and it looks like a slaughter has taken place maybe it's a subconscious desire to kill somebody now that's quite an extreme example and it's one that I had to think of on the spot there so not perhaps the best one but it's an example of how a very very commonplace event then transfers into the dream that we have um, the same day and it has had some kind of connection or association with what Freud called um, our wish fulfillment um, processes. Day residue um, has been looked at academically to see exactly why we experience it and it's thought to relate to memory processes. Now some studies have looked at the distinction between what happens when we have day residue relating to the previous 24 hours before the dream and what happens when we have day residue which relates to further back sometimes up to a week in between the waking event and it coming up and resurfacing in our dream some scholars have said that day residue which happens directly preceding the dream um, is a process of our short-term memory encoding and processing the information whereas day residue relating to material which happened to us a week ago in our waking life or at least several days 
is the process of material which needs to take a longer period to be encoded into our long-term memory. So when we see day residue from the preceding day, we're witnessing our short-term memories processes. But when we see day residue which relates to material which happened to us a few days ago or sometimes up to a week ago, we're witnessing the processing of our long-term memory in our dreams and the dream has woven a storyline and a plot and different things into um, and around the day residue to give it some kind of structure and um, meaning for us. Now when day residue relates to waking events which have happened several days ago or a week ago that's known as the dream lag effect and scientists have been trying to analyze dreams in laboratory studies to see when these um, day residues tend to occur and if there's any difference what was found is that most people tend to experience day residue which happened in the previous waking day and 70 percent of the dreamers in um, a number of different studies um, or around 65 to 70 percent there is some variation um, experience day residue from the previous 24 hours then there was a decrease in people experiencing day residue relating to two to four days before the dream so two to four days before the dream there wasn't much of that day residue appearing in their dreams then we see material from up to seven days before the dream then starting to occur more frequently so I think that was around about 30 to 35 percent of dream content relates to waking events of up to a week ago in the dreamers life so day residue seems to have more of an impact than the dream lag effect which is day residue from a week ago and there also was some difference in which part of the um, sleep cycle and which kind of dreams would display which kind of effect. So day residue tended to happen in um, all parts of the sleep cycle whereas the dream lag effect tended to only relate um, to dreams which took place in the REM um, part of the sleep cycle, the rapid eye movement part, which is the part of the sleep cycle which is most closely associated with dreaming. Now dreams which happened in the non-REM parts of the sleep cycle tended to be more coherent and concise in the way they replayed the waking material or the dream um, version of waking events, the day residue. Whereas dreams which happen in the REM part of the sleep cycle tended to be more bizarre, more fragmented, more um, difficult to understand and tended to be the kind of dreams where you see that something's been symbolised or altered in some kind of way. So day residue is something which is quite interesting to dream researchers. However, I have seen a number of people on online communities um, discussing their dreams who have discussed the content and the themes and have asked why is this happening? Why did I dream this? What is the meaning of this? How do I interpret it? And the first thing I always ask these people is um, does anything from this dream relate to a memory that you've had of what's gone on, gone on in your waking reality? Is any of this content related to day residue? And the people who have asked about the meaning of their dreams often say, oh, well, yes, um, in the dream, this seems to be a memory that I had from yesterday when I watched this particular film. But that's not important. That's not the bit I want to know about. That's just obviously 
um, me remembering something in the dream. I'd rather look at the more bizarre aspects. That really um, is quite a myopic um, way of thinking about dreaming and it's not very helpful to only concentrate on the bizarre or weird symbolism in a dream. We also need to look at the dream um, aspects which are clearly um, associated with our day residue because there are things which we may subconsciously associate with this day residue which aren't apparent on the surface like Freud said so a latent meaning which appears in the manifest content but needs to be unpicked and the associations need to be um, looked at to fully understand exactly why this day residue decided to pop up and surface in our dreams. So I always think to myself the first thing I need to do when I look at my dreams that I remember is identify the day residue, how it relates to my waking reality and then associate those thoughts and feelings in the dream and my emotional responses to how I perceive that particular event. So say for example I have a dream and I see the um, influence of something that I've watched in a movie the day before. Well, I look at what that movie um, meant in terms of the subconscious associations that I hold, what kind of connections my brain's making um, in terms of thinking about that particular um, movie and other memories, thoughts, feelings, emotional responses. And I do that through stream of consciousness and free association, which are methods which Freud advocated in his psychoanalytical theory. So if I watched a zombie film and this occurs then in my dream as day residue, I'll think to myself, what does a zombie represent to me? And I'll use free association or stream of consciousness to then find the subconscious connections and associations and then I look at the rest of my dream content and how this particular day residue fits in with the other dream language and dream symbolism. Now there's dispute in the academic community as to how much of our dreams are made up of day residue and how much of our dreams um, can be said to be the processes of the memory encoding new information and material. Now Freud believed that most of our dreams are based on day residue um, and the underlying um, wishes that have been stimulated and aroused by the day residue. Other people have said that actually day residue isn't as prominent in our dreams as um, first thought but I can say from writing down all of the dreams that I remember for the last few years and analysing um, the day residue that I can identify that it is incredibly prominent in the majority of my dreams. I don't tend to have recurrent dreams which replay themselves um, exactly the same. Um, so, you know, the idea of like, say for example, the chase dream. I do have chase dreams and that's a recurrent theme, but it's not always the same circumstances in which the chase happens. It's not always the same person chasing me and it's not always for the same reasons or the same locations. Um, so although I do have recurrent dreams, it's not a replay of the same dream over and over again. Freud also stated that in dreams we don't ever have any unique dream speech. So speech that we hear in dreams or we read in dreams or is part of the dream in some way always has to relate to something that we've actually seen, heard or read in our daily lives, in our daily waking lives. Other people um, who've looked at dream speech have said that this is wrong and actually we often do have unique speech in dreams and it is often 
extremely relevant to the particular dream theme rather than being something which um, has just come about by the process of day residue or the dream lag effect. Now I can't say for certain as to whether we do have unique speech in dreams because I haven't analysed my own um, dream speech themes in any great detail although I have covered it in articles that have looked at some of the theories of dream speech and dream speech aphasias but certainly um, a lot of people take this idea of nothing unique happening in a dream and suggest that we never see a new face in a dream it's always something that we've seen in actual waking reality or a composite of certain things that we've seen in waking reality but nothing which has been created new in that particular dream. So this relates to the idea of day residue because if we don't create anything new in the dream state then it must be influenced by our waking lives in some way. So I think it's very important to always try and look at what waking influences are shaping our dream symbolism and content and then make those associations um, of thoughts and feelings towards our dream language and our dream symbolism to try and unlock the meaning of our dreams and it's not always the bizarre elements of the dreams which are important sometimes it's the very banal things that we see which can offer um, the biggest clues as to what our dreams are about and how they relate personally um, to our subconscious mind and ourself so this is um, something which I have been um, particularly interested in recently but it's also inspired me to work on this even more and perhaps do some form of casual um, non-empirical because I'm not a scientist but certainly um, a detailed kind of experiment to look more closely at my day residue and exactly when the waking event took place so I can then compare it to the results which have been found in the academic studies. So I would urge anybody who's interested in dreaming to really really concentrate not only on the interesting bizarre or um, extraordinary parts of their dreams and the meaning but also those very very banal memories of waking day which surface in the dreams the fragments of our waking memories which then get woven into the dream theme and content um, because there's going to be a reason for it um, even if it is the encoding of memory we can look at how our mind is working while we're asleep and gain some kind of understanding of the connections and associations that our brain makes between sensory information and our dreams and I think that in itself is a really fascinating idea and shouldn't be overlooked and in particular if you are trying to embark on a lucid dreaming adventure or you're trying to improve your lucid dreaming recalling dreams is so important and then if we're able to not only recall our dreams but recall our influences and um, responses to waking events and how they um, appear in our dreams we're going to have a much better understanding of the patterns of our dreaming and how our dreaming mind works and potentially this could feed into our lucid dreaming practice as well. I would urge you to go and read my article on dream residue and day residue which is uploaded on my blog and I will link it below in the description box and um, also link my social media so if you want to um, check out my um, Tallulah Lagash Facebook or Twitter as well um, you'll find the um, links below and I would encourage you to do that as well as subscribing to this channel if you like this video I have a number of other videos uploaded and I'm going to be making a lot more um, now that I have a bit more time and have got a few subjects which I would like to discuss with you so I'd just like to end this video by saying thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon bye